Hey guys, it's Malvo here once again with another fancy little new build and it is, this time around, a summoner, wouldn't you know it? Uh, I mean, not really, but sure, let's pretend it is. I have once before made a character somewhat like this, it was, I think, about a year ago, and it was minion instability skeletons called Popcorn Skellies, and uh, the idea was you summon a bunch of skellies, they blow up um, and do damage to the enemy, and you're based off of minion life. There are, these days, more tools um, for the zombie side of things, so I'm giving it a shot to scale pure zombie minion life, and then zombie minion instability explosions. There is also another tool for this sort of a build, and that is the Replica Siege Breaker, which lets you um, have burning damage on the ground based off of your minion life as well. So we exploit our zombies by using replica, I don't know, explodey mace thing, I don't, can't remember what it's called, and uh, it kills the zombies pretty quickly, about 30% um, fire damage per second. So the idea is you have a couple of those, you have Infernal Legion as well, spawn a zombie and it should die damn near instantly, and then detonate all of its, um, well not all, I think 30% of its life as fire damage. So the initial hit is quite potent, and then you scale some minion damage, you scale some... Uh, you know, fire damage and shit, but there are very limited ways of actually scaling the minion damage for this type of a build outside of just minion damage itself. And then some supports, I suppose, too. And all in all, ends up hitting pretty damn hard. I'm trying to also scale some ignite, but uh, it's not particularly potent. The only real sort of form of ignite here is uh, using ignite proliferation, and that is just for some clear. Otherwise, for actual ignite damage on, like, bosses and shit, I think I'm at, like, 200k ignite, which is, you know, pretty mediocre. It's good enough to clear stuff, and um, that's how ignite's always been. It doesn't need much to clear um, enemies, packs, maps, all of that, but then single target typically drops off. But in this case, um, our ignite is only just used for a bit of extra clear, and all of our damage is actually coming from the initial hit, and then also the Siege Breaker belt. Uh, so with those two combined, and then also the little bit of Ignite, we have been chunking bosses pretty well, and up to this point, everything's been pretty much a complete cruise. You can also use some, you know, summons and shit. We've got a Stone Golem who won't ever be dying because he's got like 100,000 life. We've got a few Spectres used purely for utility, so you could obviously get some Spectres for damage and shit, but I have a couple of Fireboys and a guy that drops Scorching Ray Totems, um, so three Spectres all in all, and it just is pure utility. Uh, and they also pretty much won't ever be dying because they've got like 100,000 life, I think, as well. At this stage, though, my zombies have, I think, about 130,000 life. Uh, so you can really scale life quite a bit higher than I did last time I played. Um, minion instability because there weren't cluster jewels and cluster jewels are a pretty big game changer for this as well as a timeless jewel um, an elegant hubris one which changes all the nodes and I'll show you that in just a second uh, just searching for minion life so we've got like a few hundred percent uh, to minion life and then a few other minion life things using uh, gear and supports and all that and all in all you can get a lot of minion life the playstyle of the actual build itself is pretty clumsy and i'm not particularly enjoying the clear of it because it kind of feels like a delayed trap sort of style playstyle and build and essentially you'd have to you know dodge things right click wait for a payoff and then get the payoff and like I said, that is pretty similar to Traps, but I think it's got some good end game potential, and we'll see how it goes when I do a bit of the old end game. But um, I will just say it's kind of very niche, very hard to put together with the right uniques, and then it doesn't feel particularly great thus far. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, don't play this. It's not really worth doing. It's going to be one of those I did it so you don't have to type of things, unless some things drastically change in the next day and I do some proper endgame and love it. So we'll see about that, but let me show you what I've put together so far. Here is our current character, level 85, halfway through League FML. Yeah, it's gonna be a long one.
Uh, anyway, so um, it's a Necromancer level 85 at the moment. Um, mapping is a little bit iffy, but if we do you know, double beyond sextants and all that, we're pretty effective at that. And uh, just have to take it a little bit slower and careful compared to some other builds that I've played recently. But uh, we are based around essentially this item. The reason I went with the minion instability zombie shit is because... Um, this item exists nowadays, so it makes it quite a lot easier to kill your zombies and also generate some uh, ash on hit, avatar of fire, etc. Um, but these are the gloves that let you do it a while back. It was just quite a bit clumsier, but um, now with the sort of scepters, it is a bit easier to do. But what these gloves do and have done in the past is a 100% max life, quite a lot. Uh, and then the raised zombie does not require a corpse and your zombies count as corpses as well. So you could detonate off them too and stuff like that. But um, the idea is that I can just actually run around and summon zombies wherever I want without first of all needing desecrate or unearth or some shit like that. So uh, pretty niche gloves, pretty niche um, scepter. And then you can also capitalize off the replica siege breaker for this type of a build because your minions will spread burning ground on death. 24% of their max life, that's if we catalyze it, um, per second on the ground. Ends up being a decent chunk of uh, sort of burn damage, and it does help uh, clear, does help um, single target. It's quite nice for plenty of little gauntlet style things that just constantly, or waves of enemies that spawn so in some delve nodes and shit like that. Um, essentially, similar to a totem build, right? You just put down a few burning ground things, let me go uh, give you the demo of that, actually. A um, few burning ground type things, people or monsters run over it, and they do um, die pretty quickly to that shit. So there's our zombies. You can see they die quickly. You can see the burning ground. Um, it has a decent radius at this point because uh, I am using increased area of effect. And that's one of the only ways you can actually get area on this build for the explosion of the zombie. Um, you do want some area because otherwise it'll feel pretty bad. So we're using increased area of effect and also this node over here. Bunch of area and that helps. Generic area I'm pretty sure does not do anything uh, for the zombie um, explosions and the zombie burning ground. Um, so that's currently what's happening there. Uh, those are the main uniques. They're pretty niche. They're kind of hard to get. I personally haven't had any of these. I just bought them um, pretty cheap because they're not that well desired or anything. Uh, and then, of course, for single target, we do swap into a Montregul's Grasp, which gives us another 5,000 max life to our zombies. Um, the reason we don't really want to use it full time is because it also gives our zombies um, 25 res, so it makes them die quite a lot slower. Uh, currently with these, you know, you've got 28%, 25%, and Infernal Legion over here. Zombies take less than a second to die, as you can see. If you chuck on one of these, you've lost... 28% for example of the um, max life per second and you've also given your zombie 25 fire res. So you can see he's going to take quite a bit longer to die and for just pure um, clearing and all that you don't really want that it will become pretty clumsy. So it's just for single target we'll swap that on for certain bosses and shit and uh, hopefully it works out well enough that we can still detonate because the one issue is that things can move you know it's got two seconds or so for a boss to move around and stuff and plenty of bosses are pretty active and mobile and uh it's kind of sometimes hard to line up a hit on them so that's the weird gear out of the way in the build uh otherwise what do we have here is a phantasmal ray zombie that lets um the zombie take 20% of their life over one second when raised. So that's also going to speed them up a little bit. I wouldn't call this mandatory at all. Maybe just buying a level 21 zombie gem is a lot smarter. But this guy's currently level 19. Going to get him to 20. Vile to 21, hopefully. Uh, if that doesn't work out, might just buy a 21 anyway. Because this shouldn't be that important of a quality. Uh, so raised zombie. That's what our life uh, is all based off of. This guy here. Uh, then have combustion. We don't really have any ignite chance um, for the zombies themselves without this. So it is pretty worth using because the only other source of ignite we could possibly get is raise and pillage, I do believe, since all this ignite stuff doesn't work. Uh, so that's another 20% ignite, if that even works. Currently on the tooltip, it doesn't show it up, but I'm assuming it still works. And then also flammability. Uh, so we've got combustion. 
Uh, Infernal Legion to actually kill the zombies also does a bit of fire damage. Uh, minion damage, minion life, and increased area. And for the most part, I map with Ignite Prolif instead of minion damage, just so we can get a bit better spread and uh, clear happening. But then I swap in single target for minion damage, and then also I'll put in Conk Effect for uh, area for single target as well. Um, otherwise, what do we have? Stormbrand, Hex Touch, Arcane Surge, Flammability, so that's for Elemental Equilibrium, makes things weak to fire. We've got Enlighten. Vitality, Skitterbots, and also a Aspect of the Spider for my reservation. Uh, up here, we crafted a Helm. Uh, all I was really going for was just minion damage, minion life, just for the percent damages, because minions deal extra damage, and then minions have extra life. I just wanted those two rolls, but did end up getting a plus three socketed minion as well. Um, and that's where we put our Spectres, so then we can get a third Spectre this way. Uh, and then we attach elemental army so that they apply exposure. Um, multiple totems so that my totem bro can put down more than one totem for Scorching Ray. And then minion life just so they pretty much never die. Uh, we then have second wind and flame dash, stone golem with no attachments at the moment. And flesh offering because I do have the ascendancy that gives me cast speed from it. The other ascendancy is pretty damn important. Um, this thing's kind of whatever. But you get plus two to minion skill gems, which is huge for minion life, and then 20% more life, which is also rather huge. You can go down this route, uh, Plague Bringer, Corpse Pact. 50% uh, increased life really isn't that much when you have like 500% from the tree or some shit like that. Uh, and then Plague Bringer is kind of nice, but ultimately it's whatever. Uh, I think this is kind of the nicer route. So as far as the passive tree is concerned, we just want clusters at the moment, so two big clusters, so that we can get the medium clusters, because that's where most of the minion life is coming from. We do have minion stability, minions explode when reduced to low life, 33% fire damage, oof. Uh, picked up elemental equilibrium, just for Stormbrand, so that we have minus fire to the enemies. Uh, and then this guy here. Grab an Elegant Hubris and Divine it until you get some nice rolls either here or here. And in this case, we got um, three usable notables in the form of minions have 80 life, 80 life, and 80 life. So it converts everything into just a random sort of node, um, and the small nodes do nothing in the end. Ideally, you're getting minion life. There are some minion damage nodes that go up to 80% as well. That would be huge too if you can get that. But... Um, Priority here is just minion life and like I said it can go either here or here and then you can pick up plenty of stuff um, Revolved around either of those the clusters themselves are pretty fucking simple because we just need a large cluster Grab the minion damage just about nothing matters feasting fiends um, Raise and pillage are the only two good ones there. We then want a medium and we're going for six passives and then there's only one good thing there as well, which is hulking corpses for more minion life. So you're just stacking minion life, picking up the small passives, packing in a few jewels that just have life, minion life, pretty much nothing else. Um, likewise over here, hulking corpses and also grabbed feasting fiends. Um, and this one's pretty much exactly the same. So that's pretty much all there is to it for the build. I've anointed that. Yep. Uh, ultimately, hasn't really been the best venture so far. It's just kind of whatever, but uh, I will do my best to make it work in the end game and hopefully deliver some cool boss kills. But you definitely need like a lot of very intricate uniques and I don't think it makes for the biggest thing just yet anyway. We'll have to wait and see, but uh, currently I'm saying probably don't play it. Maybe Popcorn Skellies is still the right answer if you're going to play this type of build. But for now, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.